In today's episode, we're talking about a brutal case where a woman's face was beaten off by her ex-boyfriend after he was accidentally released from jail for previously viciously beating her. Welcome lambs, welcome new lambs, welcome dedicated lambs to Love and Murder, Heartbreak to Homicide, your midweek mini edition. Before we begin, I want to say that this episode and all my episodes are sponsored by my lambs and Patreon, patreon.com forward slash love and murder. If you want to be a supporter of love and murder, then head on over there and go ahead and join. Let's head on over to this midweek mini. Lauren Johansson's father, Dr. Lance Johansson, found his daughter's body in the backseat of her car on July 3rd. He said it was, quote, brutally mutilated. Let's rewind back a little bit. Lauren Johansson was described as a very beautiful, popular, everybody wanted to be around her young woman who grew up in Gulfport, Mississippi. While she was in high school, she started dating this guy named Bryson Rivers, who at the time in high school was the star football player. During their relationship, it was really volatile. There were what others would say were violent episodes. And by the time she graduated high school and headed off to the University of Southern Mississippi to study nursing, she decided that she was going to break up with Bryson. So she's going to school for nursing. She has a bright future ahead of her. Bryson, on the other hand, was arrested in January 2021 in Hancock County, Mississippi for a DUI. Then in 2022, when he's 22, he was arrested again in October for car theft. And this was in Harrison County. And then he was arrested again in December for possession and trafficking of controlled substance. While all this is going on and Lauren is at college, Bryson is still bothering her. Lauren's family says that Bryson was, quote, obsessed with her and he stalked her all throughout when they're not supposed to be together. He had broken into her apartment. Anytime she tried to talk to another guy, he was always there and he always fought this other guy. So they were really, really surprised, shocked, actually, to find out that in late 2023, Lauren and Bryson were back together. And not only that, she was going with him on a vacation to Nashville, Tennessee. The only thing her father could think of, Dr. Johansson said, he figured that Lauren was suffering from, quote, battered woman syndrome. On December 11th, while they're on their vacation, they went to some museums, they played top golf, which I don't know what that is, And then later on, while they were in the car driving to another destination, Bryson, who's drunk by this time, accused Lauren of having sex with a random bartender and just started beating on her in the car. Lauren called her family for help, screaming on the phone, I think he's going to kill me. Bryson snatched a phone from her and then drove to a parking lot where he pistol whipped her and then pulled out chunks of her hair. Now, I don't know if he called his mom or he butt dialed his mom, but either way, his mom, Chelsea Rivers, ended up on the phone and she said she heard screaming in the background. So she called the cops and gave the cops their location. And when police arrived, they said they found a, quote, traumatized Lauren who was just in her bra and underwear screaming and banging on the window, screaming, help, 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 and calling for her father. Police said she was, quote, severely beaten, her eye was swollen shut, and she also had a severe laceration to her forehead. Police also noted that the car was splattered with blood and they had found a gun on the floor of the car. Bryson was arrested and charged with kidnapping and stalking. On December 18th, he went to his preliminary hearing and Dr. Johansson and Lauren attended this preliminary hearing. At the hearing, police said, you know, more of what they found at the site. They said they found two rocks in the car covered in blood and they said they found a nine millimeter pistol that belonged to Bryson. They said that Bryson's hands and his face were covered in blood, but he had no injuries on him. So clearly, you know, that wasn't his blood. They also testified that at the scene, they didn't take pictures of Bryson, but they did take pictures of Lauren. The Nashville paramedics who treated Lauren testified also, and they said when they first saw her, their first reaction was, quote, shock. 
That's how badly she was beaten. Like the, the paramedics were shocked when they saw what she looked like. Then it was told to the court that Lauren had told the police and the paramedics that Bryson had gotten mad because she was talking to another man and he had actually been beating her for about an hour before anybody came. She said she had been screaming for help at any car that passed by, but whenever she started screaming for help, Bryson would cover her mouth. Then Bryson's parents and Lauren's parents made statements. Chelsea said she had talked to her son after he was charged and she had said for that day she had been on and off the phone with him. And, you know, this is when she heard again, she didn't say if he called her or if he was on the phone with her and then just decided to start beating Lauren and he just forgot his mom was on the phone or if she, or if he butt dialed her, that's not clear. She just said, you know, she was on the phone. She heard a lot of screaming on the other end. And then that's when she called police. After she called police, she also said that she called Lauren's family. Then I guess she called Bryson back and she asked him if Lauren was hurt. And he told her that, quote, blood was everywhere. Then Dr. Johansson said that Bryson's family had told him that their son had pistol whipped his daughter. That's when Chelsea had called him. And he said he called the police and helped them find her using an app that was on her phone. So I guess both parents were calling police and letting them know where their respective kids were. He then told the court that he drove to Nashville, Tennessee, picked up his daughter from the hospital and then drove her back to Mississippi. He said he took pictures of his daughter's injuries so that he could show the court what Bryson was capable of. He said she had appeared to have been hit, quote, over a hundred times. And it's to note that the the specialty that he's in, he's an orthopedic surgeon. So he then went on to warn the judge that if you let Bryson out, he would, quote, finish the job. Police also testified that it appeared that Lauren's statement had changed between the hospital and the courtroom. So what she was saying in the courtroom was different from what she said in the hospital. So number one, the judge presiding over this preliminary hearing, who is Judge Blackburn, wrote that the physical evidence in the case didn't support her testimony. So like they're saying, the police said it was different from what she said. So you heard what she said to, you know, the police and everything like that beforehand. But now what she was saying in court was that she had fallen asleep and she had woke up and started hitting him and then started pulling out chunks of his hair. She said she had gotten out of the car, but then got back in and then she threw a metal water bottle at him. She also said that the car was bloody because she was spitting and blood got everywhere. And the reason that her eye was swollen was because they were fighting over the gun. And she said that's when Bryson hit her with a closed fist. And she also said she didn't know how her head got the cut on it. And she said she didn't remember telling police at all that he beat her. Oh, and also she told the court that she was in her underwear because she had gotten hot. So this is what she was saying in court, which doesn't match the evidence, which is what the judge is saying. It doesn't match the physical evidence. And it also doesn't match what she told paramedics and police happened, which, of course, I believe what she initially said happened is what happened. And then because of battered woman syndrome, she's backpedaling to try and save Bryson. The judge also pointed out that there were calls between Lauren and Bryson while he was in jail. And those phone calls, of course, were recorded and submitted to the hearing. Police also testified that they tried to contact Lauren, you know, for more information about the case to help her out and everything like that. And she never returned their calls. So either way, everybody saw what was happening. So Bryson was arrested and put in jail and he did have a bond of $250,000. However, four months later, his lawyers filed a motion asking Judge Blackburn to reduce his bond. So they asked that in March. And on April 3rd, Judge Blackburn said that there was a, quote, high likelihood of conviction 
because there was police body camera footage and audio recordings from inside the car. So you could literally see and hear what had happened. So she said there was a high likelihood of conviction. However, after that, she then said that, quote, a bond of $150,000 is appropriate in this case because it does not appear that Mr. Rivers has any prior criminal history. So she lowered the bond from 250000 to 150000 And I hear what she's saying, that he supposedly doesn't have any prior criminal history, which we know that's not true because I listed out three things to you before. But even if he was squeaky clean, what are you calling this, this kind of beating to this girl? You're calling this a mistake? Oh, it was a one-off, boys will be boys, that kind of thing. Like, what the... I would not be reducing anything just for the sheer audacity of you asking me. I would have raised it another $150,000. So anyways, they reduced it. And then his family, who heard everything that was going on on the phone, posted his freaking bond. And he was released on June 24th. The Davidson County District Attorney's Office said that it did contest the reduced bond, but also as they're contesting it, they weren't able to see, like it didn't bring up flags of any prior arrests. So usually like in their system, it'll, I guess something would pop up and say priors or whatever like that. That didn't come up in their system. Stephen Hayslip, who is the director of communication for the Davidson County District Attorney's Office, said that it didn't come up as prior arrest because these arrests did not result in convictions. So they wouldn't have been considered evidence of prior criminality anyway. So I guess he was arrested, but really nothing came of it. And that's why the flags weren't coming up or whatever. So like I said, His family posted bond. He was released on June 4th, 2024, with Judge Blackburn saying that he couldn't leave Davidson County. He should be, quote, placed on electronic monitoring and he can't have contact with Lauren at all. So she signed it. He signed it. He said, yes, Judge, I understand. Thank you so much, Judge. I've learned my lesson. I will never do anything again, judge. Yes, judge. Thank you. Early in the morning on July 2nd, Lauren was reported missing when her sister, who shares an apartment with her, woke up alone in said apartment to find that their security camera had been smashed, their front door was wide open, and her sister was nowhere to be found. Dr. Johansson himself woke up to a notification that Lauren's Life360 location tracking had been turned off. So everybody's calling the police and saying Lauren's missing and, you know, this guy's out. So that's nothing to be taken lightly, like she's missing. So police are out looking for Lauren. And on July 3rd, this was nine days after Bryson was let out of jail. She was found beaten to death and wrapped in trash bags and a sheet in the back seat of her car in Wolf River Cemetery in Gulfport, Mississippi. Lauren was only 22 years old. Dr. Johansson is quoted as saying, quote, I knew she was dead. So basically when everything was turned off, when he was, he just knew his daughter was dead. So police started searching for Bryson and it took six hours, a six hour manhunt before on July 4th, they found him and arrested him on charges of suspicion of murder. After he was arrested, he did have a pretrial. I didn't get the date of the pretrial. You know me and dates. I always get dates and I'm looking at my notes right now and I didn't get the date of the pretrial. But anyway, he had a pretrial and this one was a 30 minute pretrial that was presided over by a different judge this time. It was Judge Gay Polk Payton. Assistant District Attorney Clay Cranford listed Bryson's charges as one count of first degree murder, one count of grand larceny, and one count of tampering with evidence. In these proceedings, they did make a strong argument against bond for Bryson. So like you had bond last time, you're not getting bond now. And the court agreed and he didn't get any bond for the murder, but he did receive bond for the two other charges. So $20,000 bond on the grand larceny charge 
and $20,000 bond on tampering with evidence. But no bond on the murder, which means he's still not getting out. Even if his family comes to save him this time, he's not getting out because he still doesn't have bond on the murder. Nashville prosecutors said that Bryson shouldn't have been let out in the first place. When Judge Polk Payton turned and asked Bryson if he was out on bond at the time of the murder, Bryson said, quote, no, not to my knowledge. But then the ADA said, uh, Your Honor, he was out on bond for beating his then girlfriend nearly to death. And this happened in Nashville. So right now he is in jail waiting his trial. And I haven't seen when his trial is going to be, but he is in jail waiting his trial. In mid-July 2024, a panel of six judges requested an evidentiary hearing over him being released in the first place. They want to speak with the bonding companies over his release. That hearing is actually scheduled for August 15th in Nashville, and they're going to have to explain the timeline from the day he was released on bond until the day he murdered Lauren. Now, when the judge is being asked publicly by reporters, the judge is being asked, Judge Blackburn is being asked to comment, come out publicly comment on why you reduced his bond. The judge basically had no comment. Nobody came back with any comment, anything. And one of the publications actually did get a response, which was the Daily Mail. They got a response from the judge's assistant where she yelled at them and said, quote, It's a no comment. The office as a whole has no comment, end quote. Some of the questions that are going to come forward in this evidentiary hearing is exactly how was Bryson being monitored? Because remember, he wasn't supposed to leave Davidson County. So how in the world was he all the way in Gulfport, Mississippi? And nobody was like, oh my God, he's out of the county. Let's go pick him up. What happened there? So while we're waiting for this hearing, some more evidence came up and the Freedom Monitoring Service, which was the company that was supposed to be keeping tabs on Bryson, they didn't know that he was supposed to stay in the Nashville area. Then it was found out that where Bryson was supposed to stay, the local place he was supposed to stay, that fell through. So he was like, well, okay, I'm going to go with my family and live in Mississippi instead. And everybody was like, okay. Then at one point in time, they asked him to come back to Nashville because his monitor was giving them a, quote, no communication alert and had to, quote, undergo troubleshooting. So he came back to Nashville. They gave him a new monitor. Now, remember, this was only he was out. And between the time that he was let out and the time that he murdered Lauren was only nine days. So this is happening in nine days. So he went he went to Nashville, Tennessee. They gave him a new monitor and they, you know, tested it out, said his track and return to normal. And then he went back to Mississippi where he's not supposed to be. Then on July 1st, they called him to let him know that your monitor is down to 6% and you need to charge it. And he said, okay, I'll charge it. But I know I'm supposed to be there for a court date on July 2nd and I won't be there on July 2nd. The reason why he gave them is he said he didn't have a ride, so he has to make some kind of arrangement to get to Nashville. Then on July 2nd, the company called him again because they noticed that his battery was dying again, and they weren't able to reach him, and then they noticed that his battery did die. At this point, because they can't reach him, he's not calling them back, he's not answering the phone, so at this point, they notified the bonding company. They did see that his last location was near a beach in Biloxi, Mississippi. And then after that, that's when the monitor went out. Then on top of all of that, Dr. Johansson wasn't even notified that Bryson was in the area until June 28th. So he had gotten out on June 24th. They didn't even tell Dr. Johansson that, oh, yeah, he's out and he's in Mississippi. They didn't even tell him that until June 28th. And then they tried to quickly put together a heron, but that was July 2nd. By then, his monitor's off. Nobody knows where he is. It's just like, what the frick is going on? Then News Channel 5 tried to ask the monitoring company why Bryson was allowed to remain in Mississippi. 
even though all this stuff is going on with his monitor, he keeps letting it die down and everything like that. And also, if you looked at his bond agreement, it said he can't leave Nashville. So they're like, so what the what? And then that's when the monitoring company just shut down and said, call our attorney. End of story. Nothing else to be said. Lauren's father called Bryce in a, quote, pathological liar and said that he, quote, misled the judge in this hearing that was just going on. And he also continued to say that he misled the judge there before. And I think the bottom line is you cannot take a criminal's word for saying the right thing. Quote, I sat in the courtroom in Nashville and told the judge that if they let him out, he was going to kill her. He had assaulted her. This was probably the fifth or sixth time where they would get into a fight and he would beat her. I realize people have rights, but you can't just let loose a wild animal. They knew he was a psychopath. They knew he was going to kill her if he got out. I warned them how this was going to play out, and they went ahead and did it anyway. He beat her so badly that her skull and her face pretty much became fractured from the rest of her body. He basically beat her until the front of her head came off. No human being deserves to have this happen to them. She was basically beaten to death. Her face was smashed in. Her head was smashed in. She was brutally beaten to the point that she couldn't see out of either eye when she finally died and there was multiple holes in her head. I helped the coroner lift her body out of the car. It was just mutilated. You can see what happened when he hit her a hundred times back in December. So just imagine what he did to her when nobody was around to save her. Electrocution or lethal injection. That's what this man deserves. I can't explain to you the beating this man did to my daughter. He beat her so badly that her skull and her face pretty much became fractured from the rest of her body. If this is happening to any woman that is listening to what I'm telling you, get away from that person now and get help. You won't be strong enough to do this on your own. You'll have to have an advocate. You'll have to have somebody to help you and somebody that can stand by your side when you have the urge to go back. You've got to say this is not right. You've got to stand up because if you don't do something, nothing is going to happen. I wish I'd done more and I've been kicking myself for weeks wishing I'd done more. She had dreams and hopes that were larger than life. The best quality about her is that she had a really big heart. This is never going to be right with me no matter how many years this goes on. We're just doing the best we can to go through the stages of the mourning process. There's no timeline you can put on anything. You just have to live one day at a time. And we're going to do that to honor Lauren. And I'm going to try my best to stand up for her and do what she would do if she saw this happen with somebody else. End quote. Now, as I always say at the end of episodes like this, if you are experiencing domestic violence, I understand from a previous episode, which I'll list that episode in the show notes below, a previous episode where a man was being abused and he couldn't get out. He gave advice on people who are being abused and what people who see this happen and what we are supposed to say. We can't just easily say, get out to us because we're not in the situation. It's simple. But the people in the situation, it is not always that simple. So it's not about just saying, just get out. What are you doing? Just get out. It's more about saying, I'm here if you need me. Call me. Talk. Let's work this out together. So if you are experiencing domestic violence, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline if you do not have anybody in your corner. If you feel like you don't have family in your corner, if you feel like you don't have friends in your corner, if you feel like you have nobody in your corner, you do have the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. That's 1-800-799-7233. Call that number. Talk to somebody. If you can't call that number, you can also go to the hotline.org. You could do that at any library. You could say, I'm going for books and go to the hotline.org or something. All calls are toll free and confidential. So if you're scared that they're going to find out it was you who called, the calls are confidential. The hotline is available 24 seven. And if you need help in any other language, they do offer help. In more than, they do offer help in more than 170 languages. Get help. Ask for help. 
talk to somebody, 1-800-799-7233 or thehotline.org. What, Lambs, do you think about this case? What do you think about this case? I will keep monitoring this case to find out when he's going to court and what's going to happen to him, if he is going to get the death penalty or what. I'm going to put a poll out. Do you think he should get the the death penalty or should he get life in prison? What do you think he should get? I go with the father. The father says he gets the death penalty. That's what I think he should get because this is what the father wants. So that is my poll question. Go ahead and answer that poll question. Also, don't forget that a free and easy way to help out love and murder and also to get this message out there is by simply sharing this episode. So you can share this episode with, if you know anybody that's even going through a monochrome of this, like just even, you know, oh, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my husband, my wife, whatever, yells at me a lot, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional, send this episode to them. Literally send send this episode to them. Hey, hey, how you doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. Hey, I have something I want you to listen to. I think you'll love this episode. Send this episode to them. Maybe it'll help them out. You never know. But share this episode with somebody like that. Share this episode with a friend of yours also. Just anybody, any one of your friends. Choose the first person that comes up in your phone. That's a friend and share this episode with them. And also share this episode on one of your social medias. I usually say Reddit because that's the easiest place to share it on. So share this on Reddit. As you well know, we share it with everybody we know and everybody we don't. That is all I have for you today. Don't forget to answer the poll question and I will see you in the next episode. Also, thank you so much for your patience while this episode was delayed. We'll be back to our regular schedule on Friday and also the full episodes that's coming out on Monday. Oh my God, the next three weeks, the next three full episodes. Oh, it is, is just... Just stay tuned. That's all I have to say. I can't even describe to you. Just stay tuned. That is all I have for you, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.